Some of the most terrifying stories of World War II have their origin in the concentration camps of the Third Reich. The most terrible human rights violations were committed in these places, and hundreds of thousands of people were murdered in cold blood. In the Auschwitz extermination camp there was a particularly sadistic Nazi guard, it was Maria Mandel, nicknamed the Beast for her brutal methods in dealing with prisoners. She is estimated to have been responsible for the execution of half a million women and children, whom she personally selected and sent to the gas chambers. One of Mandel's most striking initiatives was the creation of a women's orchestra, whose task was to play music for Nazi officials, but also for those sentenced to death. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we're going to tell you all about the Auschwitz Women's Orchestra. Are you ready? Let's begin! To understand this story, we first have to know the trajectory of Maria Mandel in Nazism. She was born in 1912, in Austria, into a low-income family. As a young woman, she lived through the economic miseries that her country was going through, and she had great difficulties finding work. She finally found stable employment in 1938, when she began serving as a guard at Lichtenberg, one of Germany's first concentration camps. Later, this place was integrated into Ravensbrück, a detention center reserved exclusively for women. It was there that Mandel unleashed her most sinister side, as she was in charge of making the lives of the inmates a real hell. One of her favorite punishments was to whip them in batches of 25, 50, 70, or 100 blows each, while forcing them to count out loud the number of lashes received. Next, the guard would stand in front of the inmates, waiting for one of them to dare to look into her eyes. A survivor from Ravensbrück remembers it this way, Mandel was able to spend whole hours in that position, and the one that broke the right, would disappear and we'd never hear from her again. From the gas chamber, they went to the crematory oven. The torturer's bosses were impressed with her ruthless methods and her thoroughness in doing evil. Maria Mandel rose through the ranks within the SS and was appointed head of the Auschwitz camp. In this role, her authority was enormous, and her only superior was the extermination camp commander himself, Rudolf Haas. Although she could not give orders to male officials, all the women in the place, both prisoners and guards, became her subordinates. Among her many functions, she was in charge of reviewing the inmates, handing out punishments to those who broke the rules, and selecting those who would die in the gas chambers. Sala Fader, a survivor and witness of what happened in Auschwitz, describes Mandel's sadism as follows, she cruelly tortured inmates, beating women, men and children with a whip, then kicking them until they fainted she ripped the boys from the arms of her mothers. Once, I saw how she rammed a two-year-old into a car. Mandel was passionate about music, so in 1943 she had the perverse idea of organizing a women's orchestra made up of Auschwitz prisoners. Initially, it was made up of amateur artists, and included a string section, a mandolin and accordions. Her twisted objective was to raise the morale of the camp's inhabitants, she had to knock on the door of the establishment every day, for long hours and regardless of the weather conditions, to receive the new inmates or to fire those who went out to work. On the other hand, on weekends she offered concerts for the inmates and for the SS officers. The most chilling task of the orchestra was to musicalize the selection process of the women who would die in the gas chambers. The repertoire of the orchestra consisted of popular German songs and military marches, although they also played classical pieces belonging to Beethoven, Wagner, or Schumann, who was the favorite of Dr. Joseph Mengel, one of the most assiduous fans of this musical ensemble. In July 1943, the band was taken over by Alma Rose, a recent arrival at the concentration camp. Rose was a Jewish conductor of great renown in the world of music, and she had played on the most popular stages throughout Europe. Arriving at the establishment, she assumed the direction of the musical group and tried to professionalize it through extensive rehearsal sessions. Many women wanted to be part of the Auschwitz Orchestra since this carried certain privileges. They had access to better clothing and food than the other prisoners, who survived on stale bread, rotten cheese, and a drink made from potato skins. On the other hand, they had private rooms, so they did not have to live in large barracks with dozens of strangers. They even came to enjoy a certain status among Nazi officials, who treated them better than common prisoners. The other inmates envied them and accused them of collaborating with the Third Reich, but the truth is that, for the members of the band, 
playing their music was simply a way of buying some time and not dying in the gas chambers. Alma Rose died in April 1944, after falling ill with typhus. Her importance in Auschwitz is evident if we consider that she was given a single room in the infirmary, where she was cared for by Joseph Mengel himself. There are those who affirm that Maria Mandel cried when she learned of the death of her orchestra director. The band continued to play, but in November 1944 it was disbanded when its Jewish members were transferred to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. Once there, they were not allowed to continue their musical practice. For their part, the non-Jewish artists were taken to the Ravensbrück Detention Center. As for Mandel, she was appointed head of another extermination center, Dachau, where she engaged in the same sadistic behavior as she did in Auschwitz. She continued to torture prisoners and choose those who would die in the chambers, until World War II ended. After the end of the war, Mandel fled so as not to be captured by the Allies, but was caught by the U.S. Army on August 10, 1945. She was kept in custody for a year, and then sent to Poland, where she was subjected on trial. In it, she rejected all the accusations and charges against her, claiming that she was innocent of the horrors of the concentration camps. She stated the following, I had no whip. I did my service in Auschwitz, but was hampered by the terrible severity of my bosses. I totally depended on my commander and could not impart any punishment. The court sentenced Maria Mandel to death by hanging. While she was in jail awaiting her death, she ran into a former Auschwitz prisoner who was now under arrest by the Polish government. Through tears, the torturer apologized for her crimes. Mandel was executed on January 24, 1946, and her last words were long life Poland. Thus, came the end of one of the most perverse women of the Third Reich, and the creator of the female musical orchestra of Auschwitz. Thank you very much for joining us. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for our next video.